Hey, this is Matthew with BI Polar. For the next few videos in this series on data culture, we're going to take a look at the important collaboration between IT and business teams to deliver managed self-service business intelligence. But in order for us to kick off this important discussion, we need to look at how we got to where we are. In today's video, we're going to look at a brief history of business intelligence. In our introductory video in this series on building a data culture, we talked about how a data culture is defined by more people in more parts of the organization making data-driven decisions rather than relying just on instinct and experience. Now, an important part of this is ensuring that the right information is available for the right people at the right time. This is where business intelligence comes in. And today, in 2020, we can take for granted that there are BI tools and BI capabilities that are available for both IT and business users to use, but it's worth stepping back to take a look at how we got to where we are today, because as we move forward to talk about business intelligence, self-service BI, and particularly managed self-service BI, it's going to be important to understand how the technologies that are available today have evolved to solve today's problems. Now, if we take a look at the beginnings of business intelligence, a lot of it comes down to the need to have a single version of the truth and the need to have that information available for timely business decisions. One way to begin may be to look at the types of problems that business intelligence was designed to solve. Now, BI tools today, it's a mature space, but if we look back 30 or 40 years ago, individual applications and the silos of data, the silos of information that they contained, were just beginning to emerge. The fact that a business had data sources with transactional data in it was new at this point. And it's worth to emphasize the importance here of transactional data. Business transactions were being stored and managed by computers, and this meant that we could put information in to a point-of-sale system, uh, to a finance system, to an HR system, and typically the application that produced this data was the only application that was doing any sort of work with that data. So, uh, in many ways, business intelligence was a way to use data for a purpose other than that which it was created. If I had an inventory tracking system and I had a sales tracking system, there were concepts and data domains that overlapped between the two, but we can't, couldn't take for granted, but we can't take for granted that the systems were designed to work with each other. Those BI solutions used tools and technologies like data warehouses and analytics models to bring information from multiple independent silos, the multiple sources where the data was originally being produced and created, to put it together into a single consolidated view from which trusted decisions could be made. IT teams would work to perform the ETL, to perform the data modeling, to build the reports, and with this information, business was then enabled to make decisions with data that previously had never been available. And of course, with yesterday's problems solved, a new class of problems began to emerge. The introduction of this traditional IT-driven BI introduced logical consequences and new problems that needed to be solved. The most common of which was IT becoming a bottleneck for data and insights. The data was now available, it was in the data warehouse, and tools were evolving to make it easier to get data out of those upstream transactional sources, but the visualization and modeling tools were not accessible to more users. They were only accessible to these specialized technical professionals. And this meant that each business user that needed a new report, needed data added to an existing report, or needed more insights available for their business decisions, those business users needed to go to IT, and IT struggled to keep up. The challenge of traditional BI was that in order for a business decision to have the data to be data-driven, 
They needed to go to IT, they needed to wait for IT's availability, and not only was IT a bottleneck slowing down the business, this emphasis on ongoing streams of changing business requirements forced many IT organizations to be responsive and tactical when really they needed to be taking a longer-term, proactive, strategic view. The availability of the information in those early BI systems made the business groups, the consumer groups, aware of the possibilities, and this meant that their, the, the frequency and the importance of their requests was only increasing. IT was in a bad spot. And this is where self-service BI came in. And with those self-service BI tools, those business users could now create their own reports, their own visualizations, and their own data models, and no longer be limited by the bottleneck of IT. Business users were empowered to answer their own questions and to deliver their own solutions, building for themselves in hours or days what previously would have taken IT weeks or months to get around to delivering. This responsiveness meant that IT was no longer the bottleneck and business was empowered to solve their ongoing tactical challenges and IT could focus on those longer-term strategic platform improvements. This sounds like a great thing, right? Of course, it came with uh, unintended consequences of its own. Self-Service BI introduced its own challenges, and a lot of this revolved around getting away from the single version of the truth that IT had worked so hard to deliver in its traditional BI solutions. Even though in an ideal world, the business users would always have the curated or trusted data sources available for them to make their decisions with, the real world often involved business users producing their own data or finding their own ad hoc or unsupported sources of data and using this to deliver their own self-service BI solutions. So while self-service BI enabled business users to work on their own, to work independently of IT to build the solutions that they needed to make more data-driven decisions, it also introduced challenges around the trustworthiness of the data and the decisions that were being made based on that data. With more people doing more things with more data, it introduces more challenges around using the right data in the right way. And this brings us to where we are now. Today, in 2020, self-service BI tools are available to most users in most organizations. And the central IT teams are often focusing more on the underlying platform and making the data available for business users to consume and visualize and analyze using those self-service BI tools. But the key to a successful data culture is that collaboration between the business users and the business groups and the IT users in the IT groups to make sure that they are working in collaboration and to make sure that each role is delivering the pieces of the solution that are appropriate for their skills and their insights and that they have a mutually supporting relationship inside the broader data culture. The next few videos are going to go deeper into this business and IT collaboration, but having this foundational understanding of where we are and how we've gotten here is really going to be important to provide the context for the videos that follow. It's also worth mentioning that there is no one correct way or right way to do this. There are some ways that are more efficient than others, but as we'll see in the next few videos, there are common patterns for this collaboration between IT and business that will make organizations at large scale more successful than they can otherwise be. I hope you'll join me. Hey, you stayed after the end credits. I honestly didn't expect anybody to do this. So you know that this video is late. I was supposed to publish this last week and now we're God, it's late on a Monday as I'm recording it, so we're probably a week and a day later than I wanted it to be by the time that you're seeing it. The challenge here, a lot of what I struggled with 
was getting a non-technology focus into this video. The first version that I recorded and was editing to go out last week ended up turning into 20 or 25 minutes of talking about the different pieces that make up a BI solution, and it may be valuable or may have been valuable for some purposes. It wasn't the story that I wanted to tell here, and to me, this really highlights or showcases the challenges that we as technical professionals have of focusing on the context and the big picture and not automatically focusing on that narrow technology or feature specific or product specific part of that big picture. So I'm not really sure exactly where I'm going here, but my blog posts often have footnotes. This is sort of the footnote from the video perspective, just sort of a, a little mental note for myself that we need to remember to have the right picture and the right story for, uh, uh, we need to have the right picture and the right context for the story that we want to tell, because with the same information, we can often tell multiple different stories, but unless we keep our eye on the ultimate goal that we're working to achieve, without that strategic focus, we're simply moving, not necessarily moving towards the target that we need to hit. So, in any event, thanks for staying. We'll see you next week.